Hey guys, what's up? Tim here again. Welcome back to Polygon Academy, and this is episode four of the Art Station Challenge vlog series. In this episode, we're gonna be taking a look at the current state of my scene in Unreal, and then we're also gonna be going over one of my favorite tools that I use when constructing large-scale environments. So stay tuned, and we're gonna go over that, and hopefully it will save you a ton of time on your next project. So let's jump over to the computer and dive right into Unreal. All right, guys, so here we are in Unreal, and uh, let's just take a quick run through the scene, see how things are looking, and uh, touch on a few key points that have kind of advanced the scene since you guys probably last saw it. So if I hit play, let's take a run around in the editor. So here we are, you can see I've uh, started to implement some of these brick walls. Uh, if I start to run around, you can see they're pretty scattered throughout the scene. And I actually just use this top piece right here from these brick walls to uh, work as a floor tile for now. For these rocks, I actually just took uh, this shader and slapped it on them for now. Uh, because I knew it was going to be a mixture of the gray and the green that my uh, palette for the scene is consisting of. So that way I just get an overall feel for the composition and uh, even though there's horrible stretching all over them, uh, it actually works a lot better than just having this flat gray placeholder. So it just kind of gives me a sense of the feeling and like when you look at it in motion you can kind of see like, oh, okay, yeah, these are going to be some mossy rocks. And uh, after I sculpt them, I'll replace it with a, a nice fully finished model. But uh, for now, good, just an advancement on the placeholder state and it uh, gives me a little bit of an extra feeling of, of where the scene's going and uh, shows me that my moss shader with the Z-Up stuff on it is uh, probably gonna hold up pretty well uh, once I start to advance the scene. There's obviously still a lot, a lot of work to do uh, and the deadline is quickly approaching as I'm finding. So uh, going through and I'm gonna work on these stairs next, uh, get them all sculpted up just so I'm kind of in the consistent vein of everything I've been sculpting. I'm in those, you know, edge chunking up ha habits. Uh, so it's gonna go pretty quick and easy, I think. It's just literally more of the same workflow. Uh, and that way, then I can spend the, probably the next week focusing on all the organic elements like the rocks, the trees, uh, grass and bushes and stuff like that. Uh, because then I'll just be in this more of a, like a uh, focus on all, all the organics at once. And I can probably reuse like branches and pieces here and there. So let's hop out of game mode and uh, let's dive into today's little mini lesson. Uh, what I'm going to be talking about is using prefabs or blueprints inside of Unreal to save you a lot of, a lot of time. Uh, this is one of my favorite features and uh, a lot of the games that I've worked on have had similar features in an engine. They're usually called prefabs. Uh, Unreal calls them blueprints, so I'll refer to them both probably back and forth. It's just a habit. Uh, but basically what, if you, what a prefab is, is if you think about it, is it's a container uh, that has a bunch of meshes already assembled um, that you can edit one and then when you save it, all of those duplicated versions of, the, of that asset throughout the scene are updated. Um, so it's kind of like a group, but the, thing, the downside of groups is if you update one of them, uh, it doesn't cascade the change throughout the world. So say there was a bug where uh, a piece of grass was floating in, uh, on one of these walls. Um, normally, if it was a group, I would have to go ungroup them, move the grass down, fix it, and then go on to the next group and fix it over and over and over. By using prefabs, I can fix it once, hit the save button, and then all the prefabs that are the same group uh, of these items throughout the scene, uh, the changes will be updated automatically. So it's literally like you do one thing once um, and you save yourself a ton of time because you can scatter them throughout the world uh, as the basic asset kit assembled. So just the brick walls and maybe the top part. And uh, then later on when I have all my foliage, I can just go into that one prefab, uh, add in the grass and the cracks, and you know, roots coming out from in between the bricks and bring them to a really high level of detail. And uh, then when I hit save and update, all the ones throughout the world will have this awesome high like fidelity uh, level of props. And you know, if I add decals to it, uh, that's all duplicated throughout the world. So I literally just have to edit or modify one or two assets. And then my, my level goes from like placeholder to almost finished art uh, with like a couple clicks of a button. So I find it really, really awesome. It saved me a ton of time and a headache when it comes to fixing bugs in the past. Um, and I just, I just can't recommend working like this enough. So uh, let's dive into it. I'll show you some of the prefabs I've created and how to create them and then give you some examples. So if I fly over here, you can see these collections of the brick walls and the tops are actually just a prefab. And I'll just copy paste this, bring it out. And if you take a look here, uh, this asset uh, you can see it's basically one, it works as one object and everything moves together. And uh, if you look, here are the individual components. So there's one of my four meter walls, you know, the corner pieces. Uh, I have all these individual little uh, top tiles here. 
So it's super, super easy um, to, to just quickly, instead of having to go and select all these different assets anytime I want to move something, I just grab this one. I can duplicate it around. Uh, you know, say I wanted one over here, just smash it through. Boom. You know, super quick rather than having to select 50 different assets and uh, try and make sure they're all selected, move it. Oh, oh, I forgot that top piece. Got to go select that again. Uh, so, and that way I'm just like the modular uh, pieces tutorial I was talking about is using big pieces to build the world. Save a lot of time from going in and headache from going and selecting every little thing over and over and over again. Um, another prefab I created in the scene is these floor pieces here. So I created basically a four meter by four meter collection of these um, flooring bricks and uh, just rotated them at different directions. And uh, that way they have, they still look as a whole, they look kind of unique, um, but I, I can just update this one piece, add all the grass in the cracks, you know, broken tiles here and there. And uh, those changes will just quickly cover this entire surface. So if I actually edit this blueprint, I'll drag it over here into this window so you guys can see what's going on. Uh, so this is what the, the prefab or blueprint essentially is. It's just this co collection of bricks. You can see if I move this one up, throughout the world, everything changes. So you can see just how powerful this can be when uh, you start to make, you need to make a big change or uh, you know, really start adding detail like, oh, I want, I want all my, my floors to be a lot more you know, cracked up and, and all that stuff. So I could just go in, you know, change it up, scale this one, scale this one. And all of a sudden, all my floors have all those changes scattered throughout. And uh, instead of going and have to actually move every single brick, rotate each one uniquely, I just change one piece and uh, it gets the look that I want scattered throughout the entire world where I'm using it. So super, super powerful. Let's say I wanted to edit this. Go to edit blueprint. And uh, let's say I wanted to start adding some grass to this. And I created some really super, super crappy uh, placeholder grass. Um, what I'm going to do is just copy paste this asset. It's the easiest way within working prefab when working within prefabs is to just duplicate a part of it that's already there and uh, then swap the, the mesh in Unreal rather than trying to drag in unique things. So I'll show you how to create prefabs from scratch in just a second. Uh, but what I'll show you is ex another example of just how awesome this can be. So if I go search for my grass mesh, say I had this amazing grass here, but say I wanted it in all the cracks. So I just grab it, you know, duplicate it around here and there. Really going quick with this. Cool, awesome. We're starting to get some grass in all the cracks. And then maybe switch this to a, a ledge one I had just to overhang the edge. Um, so these are super placeholder meshes, but when I go and actually create the, the nice versions of all this foliage, I just have to really dress up this one piece of, uh, or this one prefab and uh, everywhere where I've used all these meshes uh, or these prefab kits, it's just instantly gonna be updated and save me a ton of time, which I love because that way I can focus the rest of my remaining time on creating either missing little polish assets uh, or just going in and you know fine tuning my materials and lighting, which is gonna have a lot bigger of an impact than sitting around making sure every piece of grass or every little rock is hand placed to perfection, which uh, players, they will never notice that anyways. Say I wanted some roots coming out of the cracks here, the bricks, just paste this asset. Swap it for my roots placeholder. Definitely would spend more time than this, but uh, for demonstration purposes, it works absolutely fine. And uh, if I was to move this out of the way, you can actually see everywhere in the world, real time, these, uh, these changes starting to happen. Now, if I fly around the world, you start to see everything's already covered in roots. So if I hit play, 
run around. You can see with like literally 30 seconds worth of work, uh, it's made a huge change in the overall look, uh, like look of my scene. And uh, that's something that I would find, you know, but doing that by hand, placing every piece of tuft of grass and roots and all that stuff, it could take hours. And by doing it like this, I'm just saving myself hours, literally hours of work. So uh, that's a, a great example of what I call just like working smarter, not harder and uh, let the tools do all the heavy lifting for you. So to create a prefab from scratch in Unreal, it's really, really easy. Uh, let's dive into that. What I'll do is I'll go into my meshes and I'm just gonna basically recreate one of these. Uh, you can do it anywhere in the world. I'm gonna go over here where it's like, there's not so much visual noise and it's easy to see. What I'm gonna do is go into my structure folder, grab one of these corner pieces for this wall, just drag it out. And uh, you can create a prefab from as little as like one object. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly, you know, rotate this around to get some, get something I can uh, quickly, you know, use. Let's say I just wanted like a little square one compared to the uh, the longer four meter variation. So I'll just grab these two pieces. We'll we'll, add, we'll actually add the cap inside once the prefab is already created. So I'm just going to slide this. Okay. Cool. So, you know, this is going to be the base of our, our prefab. I just want this little square chunk. Uh, you just grab, you select uh, the objects that you want to create the prefab out of. Go here up to blueprints and go convert selected components to blueprint class. Hit that. It's going to ask you where you want to save the blueprint. Uh, I save all mine in just a prefabs folder. That way I know it's not, uh, I'm not, you know, searching through meshes. It's actually just already assembled meshes in that one folder. Uh, it makes it a lot easier when you're trying to troubleshoot things in the, in the uh, you know, the final stages of your project. So in this folder, I'm going to name it whatever I want to name it. So I'm just call it uh, square wall pieces. And hit create blueprint. Boom, it'll open up the, uh, the prefab editor for you. Um, if you're seeing like, you know, some of this, uh, this other blueprint stuff, just click on the, the viewport tab, super simple. There's my two objects. Uh, it tries to put the pivot in the center of the object. Uh, and because these two objects, the pivot was already at the bottom of the mesh, uh, it put it there. So basically it creates its own like local grid. So yeah, say I wanted to add the cap, top cap to it. Just grab this, copy paste. And uh, I would switch the static mesh to one of the, what is it, floor stone. So, floor stone 01. Cool, there we go. Drag that in. Just copy paste it around a couple times. Cool. Save. And there's our prefab. It takes the ones you uh, had selected and actually converts that to a prefab in your scene as well, or a blueprint, uh, whatever you want to call it. Right off the bat, I know that, uh, say these clusters of rocks, I'm going to probably sculpt two, maybe three unique uh, rock meshes. And then what I'll do is I'll assemble them in the engine into interesting rock formations, cover them with moss, you know, have uh, roots coming out of them. And uh, so that's a definite prime candidate for building a couple of really cool, unique prefabs. Um, these clusters of lanterns and st or statues, whatever they are, uh, definitely, definitely a good opportunity to, to create a cluster of, you know, two or three with some really cool, unique grass coming out from in between them. Uh, and then take that thing, scatter it around, and then maybe add one or two custom hand placed ones to kind of break the, any repetition. Awesome opportunity right there. All right. I hope you guys are beginning to understand how using prefabs can help save you a ton of time when it comes to building large scale environments. And then that way you have extra time at the tail end to really go in and fine tune the, t the details. You're not sitting there placing every individual blade of grass in the cracks. You do it on one small key piece and that way it's replicated throughout the world. And then during the polish phase, if you really need to add that extra detail, you can go ahead, break the prefab or the blueprint and then adjust it within it. And then you'll be in an awesome shape and have a lot more time to really fine tune the details in the scene because they've already been built in to like an alpha or beta level of quality. Speaking of working smarter, not harder, if you've been following since the first episode in this vlog series, 
you'll know that I'm a huge, huge advocate of using as much reference as possible because it makes the production process so much smoother. I just recently picked up Jonas Ronegaard's two-part Japan reference pack, and I gotta say, it's super, super awesome. For me, it was like an absolute no-brainer. It's an insane bargain. Having those hundreds and hundreds of images on my hard drive that I can quickly reference and uh, look at for when I need to build my little stone statues or the roof that I built, it is a huge time saver. Uh, instead of spending hours combing through Google, I can just look through this pack. They're all super, super high res, way higher than anything I can find on Google. And uh, it's great for texture reference. It's great for uh, ideas for your scene. It's great for prop reference. Uh, I just can't recommend it enough. I'll leave a link below and uh, you guys can go check that out if you want. It's got two big thumbs up from me and I know it's gonna save me a lot of time. I hope you guys really got something out of this video. And if you did, leave a comment below letting me know what, if it helped you out and how you plan on using prefabs in your next scene. If you're not already subscribed, smash that button because in the next couple of videos, I'm gonna be going over my sculpting process for rocks, building the trees and the foliage in the scene, and also going over how I build some of my materials inside of Quixel Mixer. I really hope you guys are enjoying the scene progress so far and look forward to seeing more. If you are, let me know below, and as always, see you in the next video.